Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to take you through the species and taxonomy section for HUA A-level biology. Also, I'll be going through a few exam style questions and I'll be explaining their mark schemes. And as always, I'll be putting timestamps in the comments section so that you can skip to the relevant sections that you wish to study from if you do not want to watch the whole video. Right, so let's get started. So, this is the content that we're going to cover today. So first, what is meant by species? Then we're going to cover courtship behaviour. Then we're going to cover the phylogenetic classification system. Then hierarchy and the taxonomic system. And then we'll take a quick look at the binomial naming system. So what is meant by species? A species is basically similar organ organisms, so organisms with similar features that can reproduce to produce fertile offspring. Now the key term here is, if I get my pen, fertile. So here we have a horse that has been produced by two organisms of the same species, so two horses. So this, mean, this horse here is fertile. So just put an F. And here we have a different organism which is called a zorse. This is a cross between a zebra and a horse. And as zebras and horses are different species, the zorse is, well, most of the time infertile. This is most commonly due to chromosome number differences between the two different species. Also, this figures as a way for scientists to figure out if two similar look looking organisms are the same species. So they interbreed them and if they produce fertile offspring then that means that they are the same species and if they don't they are different species. So how do organisms recognise individuals of their own species? Well, they do this through a series of behaviours called courtship behaviours. Courtship behaviours are behaviours that animals exhibit to attract a mate. This is species specific, so it's essential for successful mating. So the more similar a courtship sequence is to a particular species, then it's more likely that they are highly related. So here we have an example of courtship behaviour through a male peacock. So the peacock puts on a display for the female in order to attract it. So courtship behaviour ensures sex successful meeting, not meeting, mating, sorry, as the species recognises the courtship sequence of its own species so that they can produce, reproduce to produce fertile offspring. But how exactly does it increase mating success and survival of offspring? Organisms or individuals display these behaviours only when they are sexually mature and fertile. This ensures a high chance of fertilisation of the sperm and egg as the organism is sexually mature and fertile at this point. Also, the courtship ritual makes sure that the organisms form a pair bond. This leads to um, a more successful upbringing of the offspring, so they are more likely to survive and thus reproduce again over many generations. Also, this allows a female or the male to select a strong and healthy male. This links into natural selection as advantageous characteristics can be then passed on to offspring. So how are organisms classified mainly? Well, they are classified through the phylogenetic classification system. This system arranges different species into groups based on evolutionary origins and relationships. This determines how closely related different species are. And it's based on the principle that all organisms have evolved from a shared common ancestor. Common ancestors are another word for a relative, if you like. So the phylogenetic classification system often puts 
different species into what we call a phylogenetic tree, which is this quite intimidating looking diagram here, but it's really not that difficult once you explain it. So if we take, for example, a bat here and the shrew or a mole, you can see that they are quite closely related as if you go along here, that they are, have a common ancestor here. The point in which the system branches off in, into different species is where the most recent common ancestor is. Also, in this phylogenetic tree, the species that are closer to each other here are more related to each other. So, for example, a squirrel is more related to a guinea pig than it is to a lemur. So, they are also classified into what we call hierarchies. Hierarchies are smaller groups, so more specific groups, for example, species, placed in larger groups, for example, families with no overlap in between, and each group is called a taxon. Now you need to know about a specific taxon system in classifying organisms. This is the order of the taxa. So first we have domain. The three domains of life are eukarya, pro, not prokarya, archaea and bacteria. Then we have kingdoms, so for example, animal kingdom, plant kingdom and fungi. Phylum and class, order, family, genus, and species. As we go down the taxonomic system, it gets more specific. So two species that share the same genus are more related or more closely related than two species that just share the same family but have a different genus, for example. So to put this into context, here is the taxonomic system for a human. So eukaryota, animalia, Chordata, which means we have a backbone, Mammalia, Primate, Hominidae, Homo sapien. Now you can probably recognise this, these last two words here, so the genus and the species, which is Homo sapien, which is commonly known as the scientific name for humans. So this leads me on to how species are named. Species are named scientifically using the binomial system. The binomial system is universal, so it avoids the use of different names in other countries. So this means that the, a different name may be used for the same, spe same species in different countries. This can lead to errors in counting the number or estimating the number of individuals of each species. The binomial system uses the genus and the species of the organism, so for example Homo sapiens, as we have said earlier. Now it is incredibly important to know that um, when you are writing the binomial name of an organism that you write the genus with a capital letter. You don't get the mark in an exam if you write it with a lowercase letter. And also the species name, so sapiens in this case, must be written with a lowercase letter at the start. Also, normally when you're typing the binomial name, you need to do it in italics as well. Right, so that is it for the content and now I'm going to get on to some exam style questions. So let's look at this first question. Give three ways in which courtship behaviour increases the probability of successful mating. As the question just says give, you do not really need to explain your answers, you just need to write the facts. So this is a pretty easy question, it's basically just fact recall from earlier. So this is what I've put, so it forms a pair bond, which ensures successful upbringing of the offspring, allows organism to recognise its own species, as the organism can recognise the courtship sequence of its own species, and also may I add that the more similar different species courtship sequences are, the more closely related they are. And the third point I've put that indicates fertility, as the courtship rituals are often only showed once the individual has reached full sexual maturity and fertility. So let's look at the mark scheme. So here we have the first marking point which says recognise slash identify slash attract the same species, which we've written. And here it says ignore references to letting them produce fertile offspring. So if you wrote that, 
the examiner doesn't really like it if you wrote that, but it's still correct. So you'll still get the mark if you wrote both of these points. The second point that you could have written is that it stimulates slash synchronizes the mating slash production or release of gametes. We didn't write that, but it doesn't matter as you can only get three marks from this question. Third marking point is recognition slash attraction of mate slash opposite sex. It also accepts finding a mate and accepts gender, so you can refer to males and females in your answer. Fourth marking point is indication of sexual maturity slash fertility slash receptivity slash readiness to mate. I'm sure you wrote as well, so that's two marks. And the fifth marking point says formation of a pair bond slash bond between two organisms. And you can also put to have slash raise young, but that is not essential for the mark. So you would get all three marks for this question. Now, as it says three max here, if you put more than three points, so if you put four or five points, correctly you do not get more than three marks as it you can only get a maximum of three marks so let's look at this next question which looks quite intimidating but let's read through it together male field crickets produce a courtship song by vibrating their wings the natural song contains seven low-pitched chirps followed by two high-pitched ticks scientists recorded this song and used a computer program to change the number of chirps and ticks So we can underline that. Different versions of the song were then placed back were, were, were then played back continuously to females in the presence of a male. So this bit's key here. This male had previously had one ring removed, so he could not produce a courtship song. The scientists determined the percentage of females that showed courtship behaviour within five minutes of hearing each recorded song. The results of the scientist's playback experiments are shown in the table below. So here we have this quite intimidating looking table. So here we've got the version of recorded song played and the number of chirps and number of ticks that were in each version of the song. And here we have in this last column, percentage of females that showed courtship behavior within five minutes. So let's look at the actual question. The scientists wanted to know if the recorded natural song was less effective than the natural song in stimulating courtship behaviour. Suggest how the scientists could determine if the recorded natural song, indicated by L, so this row here, was less effective than the natural song. Now, as this is a suggest question, it often requires what well, it does require your own ideas. So, this is what I wrote. They could have determined this by using a male that hadn't had its wings removed. If the cricket haven't, hadn't had its wings removed, then this meant that it would be able to produce the courtship song. So we would then be able to look at what the reaction of the female to the natural song is. Also, I put they can to determine the percentage response of females compared with L, as that is what they are comparing it to, as L is the natural song. So let's look at the mark scheme. So first marking point, use a real male with intact wings or no wing removed. We'll get that mark. Notice it says mark ignoring reference to birds slash other types of animals, as the question is referring to crickets. Also, it says accept, use a real cricket since only males sing. So you can put that as well for the mark. So the second marking point says determine the percentage response of females compared with L. So that's a pretty simple mark there. So we would get two marks for this question. Also, it said compare, accept, compare results with L. But the examiner prefers it if you refer to the females. So if we look at the, I think this is the final part of the question. So we have the text and the table here on the left. So the question says, a student concluded from the data in the table above that the number of chirps and ticks, so we can highlight this, number of chirps and ticks is essential for successfully stimulating courtship behavior. Do these data support this conclusion? Explain your answer. So you need to justify your answer. You can't just put yes or no. So this is what I've written. 
The lowest level of courtship is shown with no song. So as you can see here, version K was when no song was played and this has the lowest percentage of females that showed courtship behaviour as only 30% showed it compared with these higher values here. And also I put, and there is lower courtship when there is just ticks. So rows M and N show this, as in M there are no ticks and in N there are no chirps. And these have a lower courtship percentage than the rest. So this suggests that another factor must be involved in courtship, so something other than chirps and ticks. So if we look at the mark scheme, so you could put the lowest slash only 30% courtship with no song, we can write that. or you can refer to K, or you can write courtship still occurred when no song played. Also said note, throughout for, for courtship, except response or simulation slash reaction, so you can put any of these terms that mean basically mean courtship. It also says neutral references to methodology and also that the answer must make clear that there is no song. So if you haven't made it clear that there is no song, you probably won't get the mark. So marking point two, reduce courtship with no ticks slash M or there's some courtship with no ticks, no ticks to get that mark. And also it says reduce courtship when no chirps. So we would get both marks, two and three, even though we kind of wrote it in the same question. Also it says, accept use of figures from the table in an explanation. As the term in an explanation is underlined, you must use the figures when you're explaining your answer. You can't just refer to the figures for nothing. So mark point four, the courtship must involve a visual stimulus slash another factor involved. So we would get that mark as well. So we'll get all four, four marks for this question. So other marking points which you could have written are chirps are more important as lowest courtship when there are none. And data only shows presence and absence of chirps. So you could have put any four of these marking points here. But if you put more than four marking points correctly, then you don't get more than four marks as there is only a maximum of four marks available for this question. Also it says, note, courtship still occurred when no sound paid so a visual stimulus slash other factor slash something else must be involved. So if you wrote this you would get two marks instead of just the one mark here. So let's look at the next question. Micronesia is a group of islands in the Pacific Ocean. The white-fronted ground dove is a bird found on these islands. The diagram below shows how the white-fronted ground dove is classified. Now this is often how um, hierarchies are classified because as you can see each of the circles represents a different taxonomic group and as you can see they are not overlapped so we can conclude that this is a hierarchy. Now what um, exam questions often like to do with these kinds of questions is that they don't really often tend to include the domain for some reason. You, so you're probably wondering, well, how do I know if they've included the domain? Well, there are only three domains in life. So eukaryota, archaea and bacteria. So as you can see from this diagram, a domain isn't present as the highest class of Taxonomy is Animalia, which is a kingdom. So the question, first part of the question says, to which class does the white fronted ground of belong? Now, because these kinds of questions often come up in exams, it is essential that you know the order of taxonomy. So as I said earlier, it goes domain, which isn't included, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So we can say that this is the kingdom, this is the phylum, and then this is the class. So as you can see, the class here is Aves. And as the mock scheme says, it is Aves. So we'd get the one mark for that question here. So the next part of the question says, give the scientific name for the white-fronted ground of. So this 
question is basically asking you to give the binomial name. And as we said earlier, this includes the genus and the species. So we need to look at the last two names here. So it would be Galliculumba cobari. And I've written this in italics as I have typed this. So as you can see here, we've got that question right. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it. So it says here, must have both words and in this order. So you can't just put Galliculumba or this other word here. And they can't be mixed around. They have to be in that particular order. It must be a capital G. So as I said earlier, genesis are always in capital letters. And it says here, if starts with a K, a word mark as impossible to recognise difference. It ignores underlining as often if you write the name of a species. Some people like to underline it. But it doesn't matter. You don't have to underline it for A level. It accepts phonetic spelling. So if you've got the spelling slightly wrong, but the examiner can see that what you mean, then you'll get the mark as well. And it accepts a G Kabari as the genus is often shortened to just one letter. Also, may, may, I add, may I say also is that if the genus is known, but the species isn't known, we can often write the species as just SP. Right, so this is the final part of the question. This classification system consists of a hierarchy as there are small groups within larger groups. Give one other feature of a hierarchy that is shown in the diagram. So that's pretty easy. We can say that there is no overlap. As you can see, be between these circles, there is no overlap. And even if you didn't see the overlap, we know from earlier in the video that another feature of a hierarchy is no overlap. So there is no overlap, so we'll get that mark. Right, that is all I want to say for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please comment if you have any questions at all. I'll be happy to answer them and I'll see you in the next video.